Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here, and once again it is time for my client Saif's vlog, and we're still continuing to do the system that he prefers, one of the very few of my clients who, who still use this system, which is basically two, uh, but he's made progress on it, he wants to continue to use it, but I'm making him vary his lifts and bars a little bit uh, because he's getting more advanced, right? We're going to start seeing overuse issues, more stalling. But we started the week off with the safety bar squat, which is what we're going to use for primary work for a bit. 85% uh, training max, he got six reps. And this is, I don't have the exact number in front of me. Uh, it's over 180 kg. It's in the 180s. So it's up there just past 400 pounds for six reps. Uh, we're doing great. And so some people will see this and go, how, how are you classifying this guy as an intermediate? Uh, rate of progress and, and number of months training. Okay. Just because somebody can squat 400 or 500 pounds or whatever, if they've been lifting less than two years and they still make measurable progress every few weeks, they're an intermediate. That's how it works, guys. I know it's not fair. But keep in mind, he started at a much higher body fat, much higher body weight, physically demanding job, good genetics. Okay? It just is what it is deal with it it's just how life works you know it's it's the guys who start skinny and are scared to gain weight like you know they're the ones who stall forever and then they they say oh man i mean i must be at this level because i've been training this amount of time but i'm like you're 165 pounds you're you're a novice okay unless you're five five <laughs> you know or something like that you're you're a novice lifter you're 160 pounds 165 pounds put some weight on that's why you stalled. Guys like him, who are at a much higher body weight, higher body fat, they're going to just keep climbing a lot longer. And in his case, you know, we've, we've been mostly cutting, you know, and he still just keeps going up. I mean, we're up to pretty much a three plate bench. We're repping past a four plate squat, you know. He's pretty much at a five plate deadlift, a hair over. Less than two years of real training, you know. So what do we do for the rest of his squat day though? Uh, I'm having him do his assistance work with the cambered bar. So we decided to do, again, easy on his shoulders, uh, easy on his bicep, and you know, works, works pretty much the same muscles as a normal back squat with some minor shift in the focus. Then we do belt squats, and you guys know I'm a massive fan of the belt squat. Massive fan of the belt squat and the reverse hyper, which is why I talk so many of my clients into buying them, even though they're machines. And then he finished up that day with reverse hypers, but he also did some inverted rows with his football bar. He noticed that it inflamed his bicep tendon a little bit, which has been feeling fine otherwise. So I'm like, well, just drop it. We don't need to do it. Of course, he's been doing a sled work. See that sled in the background? We've been using that. But, you know, reverse hypers, belt squats, even though they're machines, I'm a massive fan, everybody knows this, right? I don't have my people do only free weights to get as strong as possible, right? Because we need to be getting as big as possible to get as strong as possible. All right, bench, we ran into a little bit of a snafu this week. He went for rep five with this. And I think we're working off of a 140 training max, which is 140 kilos, uh, three, which is three plates in the metric system. All right, but he only got four reps, and then he missed that fifth. He, he kind of misgrooved his triceps. I feel like we're limiting him there. Afterwards, we're doing some back off work, of course, with this bar. He got the Cadillac bar, and he's like, wow, this bar is amazing. I know. It's expensive. I eventually want to get this bar. Not going to lie. Every one of my lifters who have one talk about how comfortable it is on their shoulders, how ergonomic it is. You know, I mean, I have lifters who don't even blog who have access to one. I have one who has one in his own gym. Uh, it's a phenomenal bar. Just like that transformer bar. And if I were to add any two bars to my collection, at this point it would be those. You know, over time we'll do it. All right, afterwards he's doing band pull-aparts. I'm about to pull that out though because I want him doing uh, upper back work on all three of these training days because he's still on the, the three-day squat bench deadlift system you know, using training maxes and then reps based off of those. So I feel like at this point he needs the extra back work. So we can pull those out and, of course, replace those with more rowing. 
Let me play some of the rowing. And then he does his band press downs. Although, here's the thing I'm looking at with that bench. And I think a lot of coaches saw that same thing when they saw the way that bar went. It might be time to do some real tricep work for him. All right, we've been doing nothing but bands, and his tendons are in good shape. They're in good health. Uh, we've been doing the bands for months and months. Might be time to do some heavy tricep work. Bring those triceps up. And I think that bench would have been fine. You know, people talk about a misgroove. A misgroove is, is a sign of a weak link. It's not a sign that you weren't able to maintain something. It means you weren't strong enough to maintain a bar path for a given rep. And that means that there's a muscle weakness causing it that needs to be fixed. Um, for the first time, I'm seeing a little, first time I've ever seen anything indicating a tricep weakness for him. You know, he's got big arms. He didn't bench, he did only triceps and overhead work for almost a year. So again, needs to be corrected. All right, deadlifts, uh, his, his ramp up went good, although the problem is we didn't, we didn't make any progress on this. We did a block of sumo, he's been doing a reverse hypers and other stuff. He came in and he went for, on his work set, uh, you know, the, the one where we go to as many reps as we can get without form breaking down. He got to five reps and he's like, if I go further, it feels iffy. Well, again, that's 85% of the training max, which is right at five plates, so 220 kg. So he's not past that yet, you know, which means sumo, he can deadlift over 500. Conventional, he can't. Another reason I need to, you know, I need to keep working on his back. I need to keep working on that back and I need to toughen up that grip and forearms. So again, another reason I'm gonna have him start doing more axle bar work for the rowing with the additional volume. You know, and I felt like looking at the reps, he had more than five, but he said it just felt, it felt iffy. I didn't want to chance it. And, you know, as a coach, I'll, I'll appreciate that because we can't always see something like that happening. But when a lifter says, hmm, not comfortable going for that next rep, it feels like it would be off a little bit, especially on something like a deadlift. That's a point where you have to say, okay, uh, as a coach, I'll accept that. Because I don't like people taking deadlift sets to failure, you know? I don't like that. Uh, we run into to injuries real fast that way. Okay. Of course, we ended up the training week and this training session with a lot of posterior chain work. We did uh, safety bar good mornings, which he's progressively getting stronger on. Had him do some axle bar rows, and then we did uh, reverse hyper extensions. And when I started filming this, the reverse hyper footage hasn't come through, but I'm like, we've got enough for the vlog. We don't need to see the, the final set. Uh, we, we have enough to make this flow, make it work. So after deadlifts, that's what we did. We, do, we did axle bar rows. We did safety bar good mornings, did some reverse hyper extensions, and he probably did his bicep band work, which we usually throw in here. So I hope it has been informative. And I will talk to you guys next time.